welcome to the MVP show. Full show notes for this episode can be found at nz365guy.com forward slash 257. Before we chat with today's guest, here's a quick message from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge. So far, people have attended this program from 34 countries from around the world. Wherever you are located, it is an opportunity for you to invest in your career. If you want to be mentored in the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge, please go to nz365guide.com forward slash mentor. Now let's get on with the show. Today's MVP is from Texas in the United States. She's a collaboration and custom app dev consultant with Artist Consulting. She's a newly minted MVP coming up a year now. Uh, She runs the Power Apps and Power Automate user group uh, in her local area. You can find her on Twitter at G-S-I-V-E-D or on her website is svaghub.wordpress. Welcome to the show, Geetha Silva Salim. Is that correct? I hope I pronounced it right. You got it right. Close enough. How would you say it? How would you introduce your name? Um, Geetha Sivasailam. Excellent. Sounds much better when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got it right. Awesome. Welcome, it. welcome to the show. Have you always been in Texas? Did you grow up in uh, Texas? No, I didn't. So I moved to the U.S. back in 2006 to do my master's. And uh, Chicago is the first city I moved into. Um, and then I moved to Dallas like around 2008. Wow. And so do you, where did you originate from? From India? Yeah. Which part? Uh, from the southern part of India, uh, from Chennai. Mm, excellent. Do you go home much? Um, I do. Well, I mean, I haven't gone back home in the past few years now. I mean, with the COVID and the travel ban and everything. But uh, I have majority of my family back there. So, um, you know, I do go back at least, you know, once in two years. Uh, we try to make it make it back. Yeah, what do you miss most? Um, the food and home sweet home where my parents are. Yeah, yeah. What in the food? What's your favorite dish that you you can't reproduce just the same as you can in India? Um, so I'm vegetarian. I mean, I take eggs, but, you know, I just don't do any uh, meat or chicken. But, uh, you know, there's certain things that are very traditional uh, meals that my mom makes and also certain uh, authentic restaurants that you can go to get some good, you know, feel for the food, kind of like comfort food and things like that. So it's it's, it's, it's just a long list. That's the first thing I do as soon as I land back home. Uh, you know, we pick a uh, one of the restaurants, any new restaurants that have come up in the time and just go uh-huh. visit them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I notice that the, there's a lot of foods that you can have in a particular country that tastes a certain way. But when you, when you have, um, you know, the recreation of that dish in another country, I think just because the ingredients are so different um, or, you know, being sourced from a different location, they never taste exactly the same as, you know, the home authentic food. Oh, I have to. I have to agree with you on that. I think a couple of years back, I visited Rome. The pizza there was completely different from the pizza you get over here. So true. So and, true. And, you know, we were there for, I think I, I was there with my husband and um, we were there for about a couple of weeks and we came back and we were, we, you know, we were, our port of entry was Miami. And then uh, that afternoon we had, you know, we were looking for pizza and then we had one bite and we were like, this is nothing like the real pizza. <laughs> Yeah, so true, so true. For me, it's French bread, like uh, a breadstick. Uh, once, once you've once you've had it in France, uh, the flour is just different in any other country. And I've never had, you know, a fresh bread stick like you have in France anywhere else in the world. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very true. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about your life and career. What 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 are you up to, and and what's your what's your focus at the moment? Um, so, I live in Dallas, Texas. And um, so uh, I work for a, a company called Artist Consulting. So they're a Microsoft partner and we kind of specialized in data uh, analytics, um, intelligent apps and IoT. And I uh, belong to the collaboration side of the practice. So I primarily focus on Office 365, uh, Azure service stack, and of course the Power Platform. Okay, so, so what role does... Power Apps and Power Automate play in your day-to-day consulting? 
Well, it's it depends on the kind of clients and customers we work with. And then, you know, in the past recent uh, year, uh, you know, a little over a year, I should say, we've been seeing a lot more traction uh, with the Power Platform. It's, you know, it's just how uh, Microsoft has been bringing this whole cloud and its whole uh, potential closer to the masses, like, you know, the citizen devs and pro devs and and this whole suite of apps and tools that you can uh, now integrate into. and, And it's all rapid development now. You have a solution in days or weeks rather than like building them for months, so I think that's uh, that's that's definitely uh, a direction that I'm uh, or, or the phase that I'm enjoying being in. Yeah, when when you're engaging with customers, you know, particularly, you know, that they tell you their business problem that you need to solve with a piece of technology. What are you commonly seeing that maps well to the Power App or the Power Automate story? Is, is there a particular uh, business cases or business scenarios that you're seeing does really well and you can produce quick results using those tools? Um, so, I've, you know, I, this kind of comes from the different domains uh, that you have customers from. Um, so, and it, and it also uh, depends on the skill set the clients come from. So, for example, you know, we've seen a, a lot of HR-based um, apps uh, that uh, they usually come asking for help, like a performance management or a project management that they would want to do and want to maintain, uh, you know, after we do the work and we leave, but they want to do it with the skill set that they have. They're not highly technical. They don't want to be writing code to do things. Uh, and so for them, this low code platform is a perfect fit and uh, and they're used to these tool sets that they're already using like Office 365, SharePoint, Excel, and you know all the different kinds of um, a suite of office apps that they're already used to uh, working with. And then this lets them extend that and adds more capability to it. So that's you know that's one um, scenario that we've uh, seen where you know people um, come asking for solutions or are looking to extend their day-to-day repetitive processes using this platform. And and the other side I've seen is also integration into maybe existing reports and dashboards. Uh, you know this uh, transactional data that they want to do maybe it's like a Power BI report and they want an app embedded in it so they so they can you know take data and push it to a different data source or you know track data or add their feedback and comments and things like that. So uh, we've seen a variety of different use cases uh, with our customers so far. Mm-hmm. What what led you down this path? Like what, why did you you take a career that focused on Microsoft technology as opposed to perhaps any of the other big vendors that are out on market? So on leaving university, kind of what what took you down this path? So my first job after I graduated master's was with Microsoft. Um, so I am I was a I was on a contract role for a couple of months, and it was it was an interesting interview because you know I had never worked with the SharePoint back then. It was called Moss, uh, M O S S Moss two thousand and seven, uh, and I'd never really done anything with that I've heard about it uh, but then you know they were just looking for new fresh talent that can pick up the tool and do stuff right so um, and then I, I had a call with the interviewer uh, and at the time he was the technical lead in the team and uh, he said I'm going to give you three topics and I want you to read as much as you can about it and then he gave us like I think he gave it we were a couple, there were like about 10 of us and then gave us each like about um, say about half a day uh, to do some diligence uh, on those topics. And then he called us back and then he, he had a conversation and asked questions on what we think and, you know, what well, just with the different terminologies and things that uh, what we see is the trend when compared to other products out there. So I think that's, and then I got the job and uh, that was my first exposure to SharePoint uh, and just, you know, doing any of the... Um, uh, Microsoft stack of stuff. I, I I was an intern at college, and you know I I uh, helped manage the websites, and so that was more like you know working with .NET, Visual Basic, and C Sharp code. Uh, but um, this was my actual exposure to a proper business scenario of you know working with uh, the Microsoft stack of products. So that was my that that's how it all started for me. 
So, so I find that interesting that that process he put you through. So, did he give you? Did he go? Listen, I want you to go research Microsoft Office SharePoint Server. Um, you know, you got half a day. Find out everything you can on it, and then I'm going to do a Q and A session. Was it? Was he kind of seeing uh, the speed that you could uh, pick up a new technology and start using it? Um, I think there's. Two things that he was probably looking for. This is my understanding and assumption. One is to see the speed at which you grasp things, if it's and how open you are to grasping a new technology. Uh, and then I think the the other side of it is okay when you are given to do when you're assigned a task to do. What are the different branches or how? you know, the different logical thinking patterns that you follow to grab information about it. Um, so, you know, for example, I think I'm, I'm just trying to remember, I think some of the topics were about uh, the, the product itself and then um, how we can integrate that with SQL Server on-prem and things like that. And so, you know, I did a little bit of uh, reading on what we have out there. And back in the day, we didn't have uh, power Automator, you know, things like that. Uh, it was uh, it was the SharePoint uh, designer workflow. workflows. Yes. Yeah. Which is Windows so Workflow things... Foundation, right? Was, was <laughs> yeah, on. that's correct. Yeah. And so um, he had not given, well, he didn't talk, well, the list of terminologies or topics, the uh, bus terms that he provided didn't have SharePoint Workflow Foundation. But I think he was kind of looking for, uh, you know, how someone also, you know, thinks through things. Uh, to, uh, you know, given if you're put in a spot where you have to learn a new technology to do work. So fast forwarding to, to today, but what what was the pivots, et cetera? You, you work for Microsoft, then, then what happened leading you up to kind of what your career is doing now? Um, so um, I worked and then you know, I switched se several uh, clients because, you know, I was on a, a work visa. So, you know, you can't stay in a, a, probably your contracts are probably for like 24 months, maybe. Uh, and so, so for every 24 months, you know, I was switching jobs. And then, uh, so I had a good exposure with a variety of domains like construction and, you know, uh, the telecom industry and a variety of such uh, uh domain-based industries. Uh, and then I wanted to try consulting. Uh, I wasn't ready for doing the whole uh, weekly traveling thing yet. Um, but I wanted to, you know, experience that because I, I enjoy the, 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 the exposure that comes with it. I mean, you're not tied to a single project or a, an application that you build. I mean, you have exposure to multiple customers and multiple business scenarios. Um, and so at the time, uh, there, my current company, um, was had done a project and just left at the company I was working at, and uh, I'm, my current company was acquired. Uh, I mean, the, the company that I was working for got acquired, and so my manager at the time she she um, referred me to artist consulting, and that's how I got into the consulting business. And yeah, I think uh, and then uh, I've, uh, what was uh, I think with the power, with the power platform, it was just I think late 2017. That's when I was introduced to it. Uh, until then, it was uh, majority Azure Stack of Services. Right, 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 right. So, so your bread and butter nowadays is it more on the Office three six five side of things or more on the Power Platform? It's a mix of both. Mm -hmm. So it's a mix you're, of both. You, okay, okay. But are you, are you are you do you fundamentally when you think of um, Power Apps, Power Automate, that entire tool set? What what do you feel you're the strongest in? Um, Power Apps and Power Automate. What do, what do you think the future of these technologies are, in your opinion? I Well, like Satya said, there are going to be several million developers, right? So I'm looking forward to that phase. And because I come from a development background, um, I see the value in uh, these uh, cloud-based uh, technologies being um, exposed to citizen devs. And then when you're a pro dev, you have this whole potential to extend it and take it above and beyond by, you know, integrating with these foundational services that are already available to you, like Azure and, you know, DevOps and name it. Mm -hmm. Are you are you seeing the companies that you're working with, are you seeing a, a lean into where they might have one or two apps built, a couple of uh, flows put in place with, you know, Power Automate, and then they're starting to go, wow, actually, there's so many other problems in our business this might solve. Do you see it like that you land an app concept within a business and it grows um, into other apps being built? 
That is correct. Yes, I think that's always that always seems to be at least for the customers that I've seen the flow seems to be the starting point uh, because I think even for someone who's new to the tool, it's easy to look at a flowchart kind of UI where you can drop things and you know have a pattern of how things need to flow through and. And and there are all these templates available. So a lot of the customers that have that we've worked with and even spoken to, uh, you know, we see flow is the starting point, and then they realize that okay, now I can connect these different data sources. Uh, now how do I surface the data? Uh, you know, how what if I have a UI for it? Um, and you know, take it uh, beyond what I can do with, with this uh, tool set here. And uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, that's that's exactly how I've been seeing it so far. Yeah, so good, so good. Tell tell me about uh, your journey to becoming an MVP. How did it happen? How did it come about? Yeah, so I think late in the twenty seven, late twenty seventeen, it was my first exposure to Power Apps, uh, and we had a client who was looking to do a little POC for like an inventory management app, and you know, I was building it. I had questions, and I was completely blown away with the uh, the community that was out there. <laughs> For the power platform, because you know, I was looking out for forums. I had some questions with custom connectors and things like that. And so, and then you know, I see at the time it was you know I think Daniel Christian, Shane Young, and Brian Dang had all these videos, and I would watch them. Uh, and then I tried this little POC, and then I think fast forward to twenty end of twenty eighteen. Uh, I didn't do much after the fact. I was kind of just playing around with some personal apps that I wanted to you know, try my hand at. Uh, and then um, we had the, well, now it's called the power community, but back in the day, they were called those dynamic guys. Uh, and so they had this uh, gaming competition. Uh, I think that was one of the first competitions that they first put out where they said, we built a game with power apps. Uh, and so that's when I first, I thought, you know what, that'd be a great opportunity for me to learn something. Uh, why don't I take a known problem and try and solve it with power apps? And I'm going to learn how to work with the nuances of power apps. And so I built uh, the power roulette and, um, you know, and, and, and it was just, you know, jaw dropping to watch how the Japanese community just, you know, came up with these amazing apps like with Super Mario and you know like great stuff which you know you're like wow you know I'm here building a roulette app and look at them you know they're <laughs> way advanced um so it started with that and then I got more exposure with the community and then I uh, was trying to look for a user group in uh, my city because I wanted to I was more curious to see how others are using this technology and you know what problems they're facing or what problems are they trying to solve um and then there wasn't one uh, in the Dallas city. So then I, you know, spoke to my colleague, who's also the practice area lead. And then he said, we thought, okay, why not we uh, start one if there's not one? Uh, and so we started one, we applied uh, to the, uh, to the, 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 the organization that um, manages uh, user groups. And, you know, we were approved to create one because there wasn't one in the city. And then I think that's how it started. I had more exposure to made, made, community friends and uh, uh, started blogging and, um, you know, sharing, uh, helping around in the forums. And then also got involved in the uh, inception of the Power Addicts uh, core group. And uh, so then that uh, did help uh, me network a lot more because I got to meet people from all over the world. And uh, and it's, it's, I'm still amazed even today to have, I didn't think two years back or three years back that I would know people uh, from every part of the continent. But uh, yeah, and then... I love it. Tell me about that user group. Um, you know, how often do you run it? Um, how many people come along? Kind of what's the format that you use? Because there's potentially people listening to this that are, you know, in their cities going, you know what, I, I could start a user group. Kind of what would you recommend to them to kind of get a user group up and running? Yeah, I think I would say just get involved. Do not, you know, wait. There's never going to be the right time. Um, get involved and get started if you don't find one. And now with how uh, with the pandemic in place, the user groups are global now. I mean, if you don't have a user group, you could pretty much be part of any other user group as well. Uh, but if you if you are uh, passionate to run your own, uh, just get started and then you don't expect that you will have members. Uh, you know, within a short period of time, uh, you know, attendance 
membership kind of grows with the consistency and the content that you you know try and bring out uh, but it it's just become a lot more uh, resourceful especially during the pandemic time because you anybody can join from any part of the world and you are also providing that opportunity to uh for others to be part of your user group if they don't have a home base ug so good so good there's definitely opportunity for anybody to get involved isn't there in the community yeah for people that want to want to you know that they they user groups might not be their thing what are kind of the some of the top tips that you would give around how somebody can get involved in the community um, I think my number one top tip would be to go look at the forums. Um, you know, even if you don't have a question, that's totally okay. Uh, you should try and um, watch what others are doing. It's a great place to learn how to solve certain problems. You never know, you know, some somewhere down the lane, you might, uh, you know, uh, jump into, you know, we're working on something and you hit a roadblock and you'd remember that, oh, I already know how to solve this because I, you know, I've seen this person answer it uh, or even try helping others out in the community. I think it's 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 such a very giving community out there. Uh, you know, everyone is happy to help and always happy to give back. And then um, that, that would be my first step just to get involved, to start with the community forums. And then if you have uh, something that you would want to share, uh, don't stop yourself. Just just share it. It could be a simple tip in the form of a tweet or it could be a blog because you always have people watching. There's always thirst for knowledge and you might not, uh, you don't want to think that you might be saying the same thing that somebody else is saying because your perspective might be completely different. Well, it's been great talking to you. Our time's flown so quickly. Um, let's just finish up with some quick fire questions. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hit them uh, at you pretty quickly and just whatever comes to mind, you can answer. Okay. Okay. Would you rather be rich or famous? Famous. <laughs> are you a cat Richness or a dog? comes with famous. <laughs> <laughs> are you a cat or a dog person? Um, I haven't had a cat or a dog, but I'm going to go with dog. <laughs> okay. Okay. What book have you read recently that you'd recommend? History Around the World. I mean, that's a book that I've been recently reading. I mean, if you are someone who enjoys history, then that's an amazing book where it talks about what happened at a period of time all around the world. Um, it just helps to know your ancestry and just how things worked back in the day. It's good. It's good. If you could write a book, what would it be about? It would be about, um, I would say, my mantra. I mean, I have a mantra that I follow. Um, I call it the um, spot, stop, and swap. It kind of goes with, uh, you know, anything, whether it's in your professional uh, life or even in your uh, personal life. It's an, if you spot an issue, stop, try and understand it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, get, try and find out what gets involved, what, what's involved in it and what happens around it. And then, you know, swap it out with a better solution. I love it. I love it. That's so cool. What's one thing you did uh, that you wish you could go back and undo? So I did my master's in a program called SINCE, Computer Information and Network Security, uh, which, and I was someone who, if you've watched the Da Vinci Code and Agents and Demons, uh, you know, you know, the character Sophie Nuwu, who's like this cryptologist, right? So I was a big diehard fan of her character and I really wanted to be one. <laughs> and, but, uh, you know, and I did my master's, I picked a good set of courses and everything, but then I realized that, I um, mean, long story short, it's, just with the type of visa that you come in, it's hard to get into a job of that nature. So I, you know, and then I switched directions, you know, I got into Microsoft, tech and tech and things like that. Um, I wish I had, you know, uh, gone back and, you know, maybe tried harder. Uh, maybe after I got into Microsoft, tech, maybe still, you know, try and uh, keep myself up to date and uh, maybe see if there were still opportunities out there. But I mean, it, I'm very happy and content with where I am. But if there was a way, I would probably time travel and do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I know what you mean. Um, what's something you'll never do again? I think, well, this is something I don't, I hope I don't get into or, or be in a situation. <laughs> uh, because most of the things I've done, I've enjoyed doing them. I'd want to go back and do them. But uh, so I was on a flight to Miami and a bird hit the, uh, you know, the little fan and, and, and the flight was just straight woman down, like, 
you know, it's almost like it's going to crash. And so, uh, and then, I mean, I had my little, uh, you know, a little uh, few seconds of fame. You walk out and then you have, you know, this whole, all the passengers are getting interviewed by the TV channels, like how did it feel and everything. But then I'm like, it, it's all fun, but I do not want to be in that situation ever again because it was like, I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to get back home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. So good. Geetha, it's been great to have you uh, come on the show um, uh, we'll get this published uh, very soon. Uh, thanks again and have a good day. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure being on your show. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, also known as the NZ365 Guy. Please like and subscribe. If you want to leave a review, go to nz365guy.com forward slash review for my current reviews and options to leave your own. See you next time.